Folks, a few weeks ago, we had Aruna Miller here. She's a candidate, a Democratic candidate from District 15 in the state of Maryland and, of course, from Montgomery County. And now we have one of her opponents, Irvin Vora. He represents Libertarian Party, and he's in our studio. And welcome, sir. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about Libertarian Party, because it used to be Lyndon LaRouche's party. How has it changed? How has it evolved? You know, when you think about what the Libertarian Party is, mm -hmm. it's at its most basic a party that is socially liberal, mm -hmm. fiscally conservative. Mm -hmm. And what that really means is that they believe that there should be less government both in our private lives and also, you know, in in our economic lives. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we're we're in favor of less government spending. Mm -hmm. We're also in favor of less government invasion into personal morality. Folks, District 15 in the state of Maryland has six candidates. Three of them are Democrats, two of them are Republicans, and one is a Libertarian candidate. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit of geography of your District 15, and what do people do in that uh, you know, particular I, district? I, the, I just love this district because it is so split apart. I mean, there's on one side you have Potomac, and then you have even the most rural parts of Poolsville are also in the same district. Uh -huh. So that means that you can't just say, look, we're going to give these type of tax breaks to you or whatever, because it doesn't work that way. There's, there's the only thing you can do in this district is your policies have got to make sense and they have to resonate with people and people have to be able to understand and agree with them. So it's... It's a phenomenal district to work in. It, it, just to let you know what it is, it's, it's parts of Bethesda, pretty much all Potomac, Rockville, uh, parts of Gaithersburg, Germantown, Clarksburg, Poolsville. They call it the uh, Gold Coast. <laughs> Everybody's rich up there. No. How, do you, how do you govern those people? What yeah. do they want? You know, I, don't, I don't think it's that, that governs the question of just handing people what favors they want. I mean, I think that's what politics has become and something I just think is wrong. I think that the job of the of the politician, of the representative, is at the most basic level to represent the people. And that means reflect their actual views. You know, if if one very powerful organization, say say you know teacher union is a perfect example, wants one thing and the entire people that, that you're representing want something else. And even though that union might give money and has this sort of voting block that's extremely powerful, I think that the job of the representative is to see what is beneficial to the people, what do the people want, and part of that job is educating. I mean, a lot of people, for example, haven't even heard of vouchers. So in order to get people to want vouchers, they first have to know what it is. So part of the job is to educate people about what a voucher is and how it can benefit you know, each person who has a child in school and everybody else who's benefiting from the level of education of American of, of the American working force. Libertarian Party, mm -hmm. for most people out there, mm -hmm. do you think they are the same as uh, Tea Party people? Um, you know, I don't, I don't really know what the... I mean, there's a lot of misinformation out there, so I should probably clarify. <laughs> the Libertarian Party is a very clear stance, and that is we need to have less government both in our private life and in our economic life. The message of the Tea Party, I think, at some point might have started out something similar. At this point, I don't think it is. I think the the movement is so driven by emotion. I mean, the one problem that libertarians have is because it's so logical that it's not, you know, it's not emotional, it's not passionate. It's a very logical, very kind of stable viewpoint, and and that's that's a thing that sometimes has has made it difficult for libertarians to attract people. The Tea Party is the exact opposite stream. It's so driven by emotion that it's not clear what the message is anymore. You know, I, I don't know what the message is anymore. I think that there's, to a certain extent, a belief in small government economically, and I agree with the Tea Party in that particular area, but there's also a certain amount of, you know, fundamentalism, you know, a very, uh, a amount of very, you know, very homophobic approach, which I disagree with. Um, there's a certain amount of almost like racism that I'm, that I'm seeing, you know, directed to sometimes towards the president, sometimes towards immigrants, sometimes towards illegal immigrants, sometimes just towards all immigrants. And, and at that point, it's, it's something that's just fueled by anger. It's, it's, it's become whatever it's set out to do. I think it's lost its way at this well, point. Isn't that a great thing, that there's anger out there, there's emotion out there, that they are going to hold the politicians responsible? Yeah. Isn't that a good thing to I have? I mean, it's good to have passion, but you don't want to have your anger overwhelm your logic. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You need to be passionate. You need to be energized. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to be so emotionally driven that it doesn't, it, that your actions don't make sense anymore. You know, the state of Maryland, of course, other states as mm -hmm. well, they're spending more money mm -hmm. than they are actually getting from the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And that's a cause that libertarians have always fought. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, it's, 
the the very idea that the that the amount of money you spend can be essentially limitless is the sort of fundamental fallacy that you're seeing in both sides. I mean, the idea that one side wants to spend as much money as it possibly can, you know, on the military and on the war, and the other side wants to spend as much as it possibly can on social. I mean, you have to at some point say, can we actually afford it? And if not. Let's you know. Let's think about a different way to to approach this. I, mean, I think what I use as the litmus test is not is this program good. To me, what we have to say is is this program absolutely necessary? Not just good because you know a lot of things are good. Buying everybody a new car is also good, but it's not absolutely necessary. So that's that's kind of the viewpoint that I think is really what we need to change to.